And welcome to another episode of the Hood Grace Podcast. It's your boy, Reverend Rudy Rubio of the Reformed Church in L.A. Doing a really hood, really ghetto in my bedroom because we just moved and I ain't set up my studio yet. But that don't stop us. As the homie said a little while ago, I'm live with my homie, my brother, the man, the yes, myth, the legend, Thistle. Thistle from the St. Lou. Uh, Thistle, can you please introduce yourself and tell whoever it was that may be hiding under a rock who you are? Uh, they call me Thizzle, that's T-H-I apostrophe S-L. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I'm an artist, I'm a speaker, I'm a teacher, I'm a, uh, a author. leader, an author. Author, I, I got your book. Yeah, so, yeah, yes sir. So, uh, I'm a Facebook debater. Um, <laughs> hey, is that going to be like an official, like an official title now? Facebook debater. If it is. I definitely got to have it. I got to be right. I what, be right. what, is, what is your specialty? What is something you like to to debate on, or, or is it just whatever people come at you for? The funny thing is this. Now I don't like. I don't really. I was telling my cousin this the other day. I said I know a lot of stuff. I just don't say a lot of stuff about it online. Uh -huh. So most of the stuff people argue about on the internet, I don't even talk about. I don't even talk about the stuff people argue about on the internet because I'm smart enough to see they already argue over. Yeah. So I don't even interject some of my opinions on certain things on the okay. internet uh, because I know they're going to argue. But whenever I, I do post something to people, like if people say something to me that I feel is disrespectful, um, I definitely, if I got time, yeah, I'm going to definitely straighten it out. And, and, I, and I used to have people that say, I had somebody say something to me before, this one guy, he was like, oh my gosh, every time you if you say something, because during quarantine, I had time. Yeah, I think everybody had time. Every time you say something <laughs> to a person. Yeah, yeah. So to a person, I just usually respond. Mm -hmm. So you just going to respond to me. But, yeah, yeah. For the most part, man, I, I I try to use every platform that God has allowed me the opportunity to have. I try I try to use it to uplift people. Like I Amen. don't like. Yeah, I, I believe most stuff people say to me that's weird. I don't even. You know. Amen. So let, let's tell let's tell people. I, I don't want to say you're just a Christian hip hop artist because I know people that ain't Christian that listen to your music. You know, they're like, oh yeah, Thizzle, I got that fool on Spotify while I'm in the gym getting busy. You know what I mean? Like like they get pumped up, and I'm like. Does this dude even know what yeah, the lyrics are yeah. saying? Like, does he know what he's talking about or who he's talking about? Which is great. Like, all, all, all glory to God. You know what I mean? Yeah. But before yeah. we get into the music, tell us: yeah. Were you born a Christian? Like, like how did you how, how did how did you get on this faith journey? You know what I mean? No. Now, so uh, I became uh, I became a believer. So my grandmother, I'll say this: So my grandmother, um, she's always been a believer. You mm -hmm. know, like from what I remember growing yeah. up of her. So she's always like, she used to take me to church when I was little and all of that stuff. And um, the older I got, like I got into the street on my own. Cause I, I, I lived with my grandmama for one point, like when I was like 13, yeah. but by then I was outside. So the Goodwill clothes she was trying to buy me or, and the rules she had didn't make sense cause I can go home and do whatever I want to do. Yeah. And so uh, over the years when I got outside and I, I got involved in the streets and got involved in everything else that I, I was doing it wasn't until uh, probably like 1999 it was 1999 uh, one of my friends at that time uh, that I grew up with he killed my cousin it, it was just a moment where everything where all of my trauma up to that point it just kind of hit me at one time and it was the first time in my life I didn't really know what to do but yeah you, you just usually keep going you just keep going keep moving forward and it was crazy because uh, me and my cousin had just had this talk. Uh, we had just had this talk and he was just telling me like, I'm too smart to be out in the street. I need to go do music. I need to do this, like yeah. go do something else, you know? And uh, and then he got, so nobody was so everybody around me. And I, I couldn't see nobody that I felt like could give me an answer to what was going on. I didn't see nobody that I felt like could uh, heal my pain that I was going through. I, I was crushed. And the yeah. only person that I could think to go to was God. And I was like, God, man, why? Like, why did you allow that to happen? Like, why? Yeah. Like, 
And, and when I start asking God questions, he started answering. He started sending people. He started doing things. And and, and uh, then and, uh, shortly after that, I was I was arrested and falsely accused of a murder. Wow. And so how, I was, how old are you? How old are you when that happened? I got arrested. Yeah, I didn't even. Uh, I think I was like 20. So I got to 40 for that. And, um, and that entire situation itself, uh, just how God moved, the way the situation worked out, like that was the that was the real catalyst. Because I was like, man, look, God, if this how we rolling, yeah. I'm rolling with you. Yeah. What is it that we about to do? You know, yeah. it was like, what we doing? Because yeah. you the MVP, you know what I'm saying? And so uh, it's crazy, man, at that point, God just kind of started revealing to me all the times that he had been there for me before that point. Like I was sitting in the backyard one day and uh, I was just sitting there. First of all, the entire situation of how I got out of jail was miraculous. Jail, I had four first degree uh, felonies. First degree murder, first degree armed criminal action, first degree unlawful use of a weapon, and first degree breaking the enter. I had no bond, I had a set court date, and I'm, I'm, I'm in my head, I know how the system works. So I'm like, I'm done. Even though I didn't do this, I'm yeah. done. Like I'm at least gonna be here for another year or two while I'm going to trial, probably longer than that. And there's a possibility that I will never walk out of this place again for something that I didn't do. At the yeah. same time, I had this um, revelation amongst in myself that I was like, man, even though I didn't do this, like I've done enough stuff to be here the rest of my life. You done you enough know, stuff that you didn't get caught for now, now that you went for that, some yeah, bro, yeah. I've been there done that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm like, I've done enough stuff to be the rest of my life. So I'm like, you know, the typical, like, all right, I'm cool. Let me just get my my head right. I'm about to go in this dorm room, see people on like the typical things. And uh when I went to meet my lawyer, it's crazy. Like when I went to see the lawyer, I was going to, to hire this one lawyer that people use in the city for everything and i'm like if he can get people off of stuff they did i, I know i'm cool yeah I'm like, for something i didn't do me out so i go to his yeah for something i didn't do so i go to his office and uh i see uh he had moved and there was a dude his name was travis my first name travis mm -hmm. so that was my only reasoning that's it i said oh we going to him it was me and my partner uh 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 I said, we going to him, it's not mine. Man, when I walked in this dude's office, I had never seen him before a day in my life. First of all, I went to the door, the first part of the door, and the lady literally said, uh, I was asked her where he was at, and she was like, he right just sent us in there. And I'm like, that's crazy, you know? So I just go walking in. When I stepped in the doorway, where he was at, I look in the room at him, who probably 30s, had never, never seen him, didn't know nothing about dude. When I walked in the room before I could say anything to him, dude looked up looked up at me. He said, I don't know what you've done. I don't know who you are. I don't know what your case is. He said, I don't even care. I don't know if you got money. I don't care if you have money. He said, whatever it is that you're coming in here, I'm going to help you because something told me don't let you leave out of here without me helping you. Wow. He said, I'm going to take your case for free. And he wow. did. Like he literally, I, I had I, so I'm blown away. So yeah. I'm blown away. Like I'm like, this was the point when God be, started beginning. Like God was literally like talking at me. Like, let me show you what I'm gonna do. So yeah. that was like the first thing. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. And then I go, <laughs> I turn myself in because the police were going to my grandma's house. This she was still alive. My grandfather, this he was still alive. And uh, I, and I told the lawyer, I said, man, them people been in my granny house. I said, I don't care what people in the street think about me. To my granny, I'm an angel. Like, mm -hmm. she know I'm out here doing some stuff, but I ain't having no police going to my granny house. I'm self in said my fuck. So I'm like, they can't lock me up. I ain't do nothing. Blah, blah, blah. They lock me up. So I yeah. go, they hold me 20 <laughs> hours, they issue a warrant. It, right, lock me up. I go to court, they tell me my charges, everything. I go back to my dorm, uh, the senior partner of the law firm come to see me, ask me questions, confirm they're going to take my case for free. My grandfather was still alive at this point. My grandfather was probably one of the cheapest dudes I knew at, for certain things. So okay. the lawyer, like, your grandfather told me he's going to put his house up for you. I said, oh, oh my wow. God, they really believe I'm innocent. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because my granddaddy was straight. And my grand, my grandfather did, you know, he was going to do that. But it, I didn't even need to do it. When I went back to my dorm, man, I tell people all the time, I say, it's the only story I got. I don't have another one. So I can't tell yeah. it another way. Yeah, for sure. I went to my dorm room. And I start and I start to God. So I'm like, I said, wow, God, man, I guess you got me. Yeah. Something I ain't even do, you know? I'm like, guess you got me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so at this point, it's crazy. I, I wasn't a Christian. I didn't know Christian lingo. I didn't know none of that stuff. I was a straight street dude. Like, I'm mm-hmm. in here, like, coming down, like, <laughs> all the whole night. I literally said to myself at one point, I said, man, I guess I'm going to be preaching the gospel in jail. And I said to myself, I said, what's wrong with me? I'm losing my mind. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I got to be going crazy. Yeah. And so literally I sat there and I'm like, God, okay, it's cool. I ain't do this. And bro, I heard the Lord speak to me. He said, pray and I'm going to get you out of here. Mm. And I started talking out loud. It was so strong for me. I started talking out loud. I'm like, man. God, I've been praying my whole life. I'm, I'm going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. God, I'm praying. I'm, I'm going to get you out. And I'm oh. like, man. Blah, 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 blah. Pray and I'm going to get you out. You know what I'm saying? And uh, at that point, I literally hit my knees. I prayed. And I'm talking about it was a hood prayer. I'm like, God, <laughs> on blood. You know I ain't do this. <laughs> oh, the homies. Oh, everybody there to go. <laughs> I'm like. You know I ain't do this. <laughs> so it was a straight hood prayer. I didn't know nothing about praying. All yeah. I know is my grandma used to tell me, talk to God like you talk. He don't understand. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, hey, if God understand when I put this on the hood and the dead homie. He knows how serious that is. is. He know? knows how serious that is. Yeah. You know yeah. 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 Hey, That's he, funny. You know I'm for real. He know I'm so saying. And so, um, man, I pray and no lie, bro. The dude came to my door, and I still was in my head thinking I'm about to go to a dorm. Mm-hmm. And I walk over, go to my door, I grab my bucket, post my chest out. What dorm I'm going to, CO? He's like, man, you ain't going to no dorm. You going home, fool. He's like, you going home. I said, man, come on, don't play me. I said, don't play me like that, bro. I said, you know what I'm here for. He said, man, you going home. I'm like, come on, man. He showed me the paper. He said, man, you free to go. And, and wow. at the end of my prayer, I'd never forget. I never forget the end of my prayer. I said, God, I said, if you, I said, I ain't saying what I'm not going to do from now on. Because I knew I was messed up. Yeah, but I'll tell you what I, I am going to do. How much more people have messed up. I, over the years, I said, but I know what I'm going to do from now yeah. on. I said, now on, when I know you telling me to do something, I'm going to listen. I said, wherever you send me, I'm going. Mm. I said, that I, I'm going to tell you that. And I walked, I, I got out of there and I walked out of there and I've been living by that ever since. No matter wow. what what place I find myself in, I always know the direction back is going yeah. that way. You know so what I'm saying? Did, that's, the, that's the way back. So so did God, t- tell me about the time God told me, told you to go to Watts and post up in front of Imperial Courts <laughs> and, take a picture, is, and take a picture like a tourist. Who <laughs> that? See, now God ain't had nothing to do with that. <laughs> Man, I was in, I was tell, in Watts. Tell us what happened. Tell us what I, happened. I, 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 I got this thing, man. I got this thing where every hood I used to go, every city I used to go to for yeah. years when I traveled, I say, take me to the hood. I want to yeah. see it with my yeah. eyes. So when I went to uh, Miami for the first time, I said, take me to the pork and beans. Yeah. I want to see it because I have seen it on First 48. Yeah. And all of this. When I go to Memphis, I'm like take me to this port. Detroit, take me over here. Uh, every city I went to, I'm like take me to the hood. Uh, Baltimore, the McCullough homes, take me to the hood. I get to LA and I tell uh, Pastor Jose, man, I say Jose, take me over to. Uh, I want to see the Jordan Downs where they shot Minister Society at. Mm-hmm. He said, nah, bro, we can't go. I said, nah, man, I said, I wanted to go take a picture. He said, bro, it's hot over there right now. He's like, somebody just got dropped. Like, it's hot. I said, man, I just want, I said, is it a sign I can just see that say Jordan Downs and we take a picture and keep going? He was like, man, it's one like right on the outskirts. 
I take you like, man, but we shouldn't do this. I'm like, man, come on, man, take me off that today. So yeah. at this point, I'm like, I'm, I'm just like, let's go, right? Man, we get over there. We start riding down the street. I'm cheesing, hurry to hurry, because I'm like, hurry and go, join down. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I see pain in my head, stomping old boy out. I got the whole visual. I'm like, oh my gosh, we to join down. I got to take this picture. So we ride down the street, man, we get to going. So as we go and I look to the side, man, I see all dudes. They sitting like it's a little parking lotish type thing. They sitting there on cars. All in purple. All cars right there. All right. in purple. They, they didn't have on purple. So no they purple. All just sit. Uh huh. It wasn't purple this day. So they all just sitting there, boom, like. And so when we went past, we in a minivan. So when we go past. I'm on their side, so they see me. They see you, yeah. We go past. I see her, everybody eyes follow the van, like, whoa. So we go down and pull over. We pull over, get out the car, we jump out. Soon as we park, I just see dudes jumping on cars. Like, they sitting on the car, they jumping up, like, walking down the street. We're going, they nothing. It's a little young boy, had on a tank top and some shorts, look like he had. And probably just came home from doing the bid or on the side of the building <laughs> lifting some weights or something little youngster so he walking down and before we get to us he yelling so now jose got his back turned to him yeah he in full tourist mode he ain't tripping off that he got his shades <laughs> on his neck well because he's in the he's in he's in his neighborhood that's his that's his backyard you know but he was he knew it was bad <laughs> so he got his shades <laughs> on his shirt you know what i'm saying now he taking a picture of me he got his uh -huh. back to them and dude yelling, hey, cuz, he walking down, hey, cuz, he here he come. So I'm looking like, Jose, snap the picture, he take the picture. <laughs> so I tell Jose, he, dude is yelling at me coming down the sidewalk. And there's a group of dudes behind him, like, it's yeah. cracking. So I say, Jose, we got incoming. They coming in hot. Yeah. I said, <laughs> I said, he said, huh? I said, turn around and look. Yeah. So by the time he turned around, dude, like, hey, cuz, hey, hey, they close enough now. He like, hey, cuz, what y'all doing? I said, taking a picture by the side. That boy looked me in my eyes. He said, cuz, we don't allow to take pictures in our hood. I said, oh. I said, listen here, fam. I'm from St. Louis. I respect the hood rules everywhere I go. Yeah. I said, I didn't know that was a rule. I said, with that being said, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey, we good. You know what I'm saying? I instantly identified I'm not from here. I definitely know how I go in the hood because you was walking through my hood, you gonna get pressed just like yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I respect that. And I'm gonna leave. Man, dudes looking at me like, nah, I ain't no leaving, bro. So uh at this point, Jose, first he froze. I ain't gonna even press. Bro froze up. <laughs> bro froze. He was froze. So one of the older dudes looked at Jose and was like, Man, like, kind of like, man, ain't you and Jose? Like, man, I'm so and so, so and so. I came over here. We helped with so and so funeral. I'm a pastor. He's in downtown. And dude, like, man, you better start telling people before you come over, man. You know how I go. So he's like, oh, it's good, cuz. So now me and dude is still like eye to eye. Yeah, still like that. not letting it go. <laughs> he's looking at me still like. So I'm looking at him like, man, I'm going to turn my back on this Dude, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you looking at looking at him? Literally, Jose, we backed up. Me and dude, I'm like, man. He said, I told Jose glasses. He said, other glasses on his shirt. He, I told you we shouldn't win a rock. I said, I got that picture though. I said, yeah, I got. Look, look, look. This funny thing. So when we get back, I get to my hotel. I post the picture. So my home girl. My home girl from out there, right? Shorty. So Shorty from out there. You probably didn't see Shorty yeah. before. Yeah, Shorty Instagram. do what? So, yeah. Yeah, Shorty do what? So uh, she from out there. I ain't hit her up when I made it and everything. So now when I, I, I post the picture, I done told her the whole story. She like, why did you go oh, over there? Why did you come? I'm going to just call me. I, I, I tagged it. I put the, like, watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, right? And I tell the story, man, I almost died getting this picture. She <laughs> literally she literally. put on there, she said, and you gonna tag it too? 
So why don't the crazy thing is uh, probably like a year after I posted it, a crypt dude from over there, I guess he's going through looking at the tags, the watch, uh-huh. the Grape Street. Yeah. He goes on my picture and comment and say, are oh, you good cuz you can come over here whenever. Just let me know. No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> I ain't going back. I'm not coming back. I'm good, fam. I'm straight. But wait a minute, though. But that, but that's just the Jordan Downs. You see, Jose and myself, we was walking through the Nickerson Gardens the other day. I saw y'all the other night walking through the Nickerson Gardens. <laughs> let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all the benefits y'all have, though. Let's just be real. All right, all right. Now you almost can walk through any neighborhood in America because you are of a different skin persuasion. Uh-huh. When we see white people coming through the hood, hey, you got tats, though. So, but if you had your shirt on and your collar. Yeah. If you yeah. walk through my hood at night and you probably be like, oh, police. Why well, you see what's going on? But see, if, if, I was walk, like, if I was walking through your hood, if I was walking through your hood, I, I just came out of work. That's why I'm wearing this. I, I recognize I, I recognize where I go, so I'll make sure that I, I blend right on in. You know what I mean? <laughs> but hey, that one time we went to the Nickerson's, it, it was we, dope, bro. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I cut you off. I, I, I was going to say I bet it was. I was going to say, like, in the reality of it all, you know, like, man. I think people didn't understood by now, like, I'm I'm go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For yeah. the right reason. Yeah, so not you for know, a picture. Like, <laughs> yeah, not for a picture. I'm cool. Now, see, now I know the rules are really, really hard cool. So I know, like, Jose, yeah. whatever you know from over there, yeah. call let them, let them know. Tell them we yeah. coming through. We yeah. gonna, boom, now let's go. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, for I sure. Know, you know, for but sure. I ain't going just to be popping. I ain't popping out of nowhere. <laughs> Hey, but it was funny when we got on before we started before we started recording. You said I saw that video of y'all walking through Nickerson's. <laughs> that was oh, yeah. one of the first things y'all. that came to your head. I saw yeah, y'all that night walking through there. It's dope. Jose Jose is a good dude, a good brother. I love him. We do a lot of stuff. I mean, because they're right next door in Watts. Yeah, we're in Linwood. Yeah. We got like we're sandwiched between Compton and Linwood. You know, um, yeah. so it's dope to be able to do ministry with some real with some real with some real yeah. folks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Jose, um, my guy, man. Good yeah, people, but. I want to ask you a question. So you start off in the streets, you know, you, you, you got, you did a bunch of stuff you got away with, you got arrested for a hot one that you didn't do. The Lord got you out, um, through miraculous means by putting people in your way who donated their services and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, some fun and games with, you know, visiting the Jordan Downs, uh, reminiscing menace to society and Canaan and them fools as you're going to take your picture and, and, and you almost, and, and you got run yeah. up on and something almost happened. Yeah. But but there was a time when something did happen yeah. and, and you and you did get shot and um, I, I would like to ask you to share yeah. as, as as much as you're able to or want to, but I want to get down to how was your faith at that time because you had a whole bunch of us over here praying for you, bro. Like nobody knew what was going on at first. We were all praying for you and we all followed the progress yeah. that you were making. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, it's so crazy though. It's crazy that situation. Uh, that situation actually, I want to use the word words of brought me back. I it 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 brought my faith back to a place that mm-hmm. it needed to be. So I, I and I'm gonna tell you why. Well, I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that. So, man, it's a it's so crazy, bro. This this is a true story. Probably like around. 2012, 2013, man, man, probably, probably like 2013. They came to me and they said, God, I don't even listen to everything people tell me when they say God said. Yeah, first God says, God told me, yeah. Yeah, when people start saying God said, mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. Most cases, my brain say, uh-uh. yeah. And they be talking and I'd be like, man, am I gonna eat this broccoli when I get home or this sandwich? <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah, yeah. So I'm just being honest. Yeah, just people out, just yeah. be saying, people yeah. just be saying stuff to be saying stuff. So somebody came to me and said, I gotta tell you something. I don't wanna say it, but I have to say it because I know it was God. Mm-hmm. And the moment that they said it, it instantly resonated with my spirit. And I was like, what is it? And they said, man, the devil is about to try to turn you from God. 
Like you about to go through a whole Job story. Mm. And I felt it in my soul. I was like, I felt it. When I just said it now, it 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 it, it, it reminded me of how I felt. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta think at this point, bro, we talking 2012. I'm on the Unashamed tour. Um uh CDs are still selling because people were still buying mm-hmm. CDs. See, they stop selling. People didn't stop buying CDs like me. So you talking about actual independent artwork. I'm making stupid money, like selling CDs and not hustling, but as a result of I'm 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 putting out music and things that are life changing. Yeah, and people are like, "Yo, we believe in you." Story after story of how what I'm doing is impacting people's lives and, and all of this, and I'm traveling to the world doing this. Everything is going to a certain place, right, bro? When I tell you, and it's some things I can't even mention. Yeah, like, whatever you, whatever uh, you're able for to. For the sake of other people, that, yeah. yeah of other people that's involved in their personal their personal space, you know, yeah. uh, as far as like some of the things happened to them that affected me, you know. But bro, when I tell you everything that could happen to me, almost everything that could happen to me happened. My right. my mom my mom got sick right after that, you know, diagnosed with lupus. My dad died. My dad called me, bro. He literally called me. And uh, I t- talked to him for a minute, and I called, talked to somebody else. And then I, I, I talked to uh, my dad's girlfriend, uh, my brother and sister mom, and she like, your dad's sick. So we never, we've never had no solid relationship. You know, my experience with him was so... scattered for him but in like that he's regardless of what he was doing I still loved him you know and so she like your dad's sick he real sick he didn't want to tell you so I called him and I'm, I'm just pouring my heart out like yo if you sick and everything in me I knew who I, I say he gonna die I, I felt it and I, I if you know that the doctor told you you're sick enough that you could die I said, at least give my children an opportunity to meet you. My kids and my kids have never seen them at all in real life. Yeah. I said, give my kids a chance to meet you. I said, give let us help you. I said, you can move her, whatever you need. I said, you want to stay home? You need money? I said, let me know. I said, what I just please don't do that. I said, because I know how you do. I said. I said, please don't do me like that. Yeah. I begged him. Six months later, I hadn't heard nothing from my daddy. I got a phone call. I was in Florida. I got a phone call. I had a show. I was on a tour. I had a show the next day. I got a phone call while I was in Florida. And it was my uh, brother and sister mom again. And she was like, we need you to come to Detroit. You do your dad's only... Uh, uh, his oldest sibling, like, tell me he was going into surgery. Your daddy had surgery yesterday, and he's non-responsive. Yeah. And they, they're trying to see about taking him off life support. So now when I go up here, I, I found out some other things about my daddy that rocked me harder than him getting, you know, than him being sick, that got me in the space now where I... I hate him and I have sympathy for him at the same time because yeah. he's dying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I literally had to make the decision to take him off life, life support. support. Yeah. And so now I'm oh, me and God not I cool. I didn't know how but at this point it later surfaced in me, but I'm at this point I'm like, man, God. All the you had in prayer, like for you to restore some idea of relationship between me and my daddy, you make me have to be the person to go take him off life support. 
So I'm like, I'm hurt. I'm crushed. My daddy died, man. I cried for days, weeks, months. Yeah. Like, I remember being at his, like, bawling on my mama's shoulder, just like, mama, like, why didn't he love me? Yeah. Like, why? Like, I'm a grown man. Like, this, yeah. I'm grown. Like, I'm yeah. bawling hard and so hurt, but still so confused, but still won't, still in his. point of dumb is so to be like I got you I wasn't even a Paul Burr I was like I'm carrying my daddy like somebody got to get off you know what I'm saying and yeah. and so then after that bro it's just like when I say everything in my life fell apart bro I, I lost I lost pretty much everything I had at one time all out of my control yeah and when it got to that point like friends, family, like people I've been taking care of my whole life, doing stuff for, like everybody, like people talking about me, they, nobody asking me what's going on, what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. You know, I had other situations that happened. Like I said, I can't speak on like people that I love getting harmed and things happening. And bro, I'm talking about, it was just, I sank to like the lowest place I had ever been in my life. At 26, in 2016, bro, I was literally sitting on the bed in my house in December of 2016, and I was sitting on the bed in my room, and I literally would wake up every day, and I would be like, God, why did you just let me wake up today? Mm -hmm. Like, what for? Like, just so you can, just so you can run me through the mud again today, yeah. huh? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, let me get up so I can get drugged. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the, and the whole time I'm fighting, still trying to be, you know, like, I'm, I'm trying to fight through it and I'm doing this and, and all of this stuff. And if, if people, if people, the people that really paid attention, because a lot of people did, if you notice, so in 2016, I didn't do not one show in 2016. I probably, I had at least, no exaggeration, I had at least 60 uh, booking requests in my email. Wow. And I didn't respond to any of them because I said, I'm not about to go stand on the stage and lie like I'm in a good space. Yeah. Even with God, and I'm not. I said, yeah. I don't care what this don't cost me. I'm not doing it. There's not enough money in the world to make me be somebody's phone. I just yeah, don't know how to do that. So I'm like, if I'm hurt, I'm hurt. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, if I'm hurt, I'm hurt. I, honestly, it, that part wasn't even a hard decision because like I don't know how to be a phony person. So I, I don't know how to I don't know how to be a phony person. So I'm like, I'm not gonna do it. The hard part was what came like not making them you spending money you got saved, everything happened and stuff going crazy. The whole everything just the rug just got snatched from under me. Then twenty seventeen I went out and I did some stuff. I was in a better space. Uh, I started, um, like at the end of 2016, I literally was sitting in the room just like, this is horrible. Yeah. And then in 2017, at the beginning of 2017, like January, like 2016, the end of the year, like honestly, bro, I was like, I just didn't want to live. Mm -hmm. Then at the beginning of 2017, I was sitting at that same spot on the bed. And I was just like, man, what am I doing? Like, but I still yeah. didn't encourage the person that's used to encouraging everybody. Yeah. And I'm talking, when I tell you, bro, when I tell you my phone did not ring, like nobody called me, like people, even people that I was calling, like friends, <clears throat> I'm calling them and pouring my heart out. Like, man, this is what I'm going through. I wouldn't hear from them for another month or two until they need something from me. That's you know so what I'm sad, saying? Bro. And so uh, in 2017, I, I came to this place where I was just like, yo, I, I gotta, I gotta get up. I gotta, I gotta get up. And it was still hard because it's like stuff still happening. Yeah, you weren't able and to so, deal uh, with all this stuff yet. One, yeah. And so one of my friends was just like, yo, you you too dope for that. Like, you you can't. You can't just, and so then I kind of started, that's when I first started working out. 
So yeah. I went, I, I did some stuff. I went to Israel. I came back. My mind, my mind, by this point, my mind is in a different place. I'm like, all right, God, like, it's cool. Like, just help me walk through this. I get it. You know, whatever the case is, right? And so I, I went to the Israel stuff. I did some dates, did some uh, stuff. I got to hang with Seven. I had never been around Seven before. Okay. Like, I got to hang with Seven. When I tell you this dude is probably one of the most genuine, God-loving, realest dudes I've ever met in my life. Yeah. Like, I got to be with this dude for a month. This dude spoke life into me every day. Praise God for that. Praise God like, for that, man. every day. Yeah. He didn't even know. He didn't even know what he was doing. Like, he just was... Every day, me and him talking, he just like boom, 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 boom. Every day. And so I'm um I started working out. I started losing weight. Because by the time I came out of this depression, bro, I was so big. I was so big where I was just like, I didn't even know myself no more. I didn't even know I had got that big. I saw a picture of myself one day and I literally started texting it to my cousins and people I knew. And I was like, yo, please tell me I'm not, this not how I look. Yeah. I was like, this is not how I look. And they like, yeah, bro. Like, yeah. And so when I started working out, I started losing weight. It started helping me overall. Yeah. Like, like overall for helping me. And so after I did some of the stuff, I just kind of, I got to the end, like to the end of the year. And I said again, I said, you know what? I said, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm mentally in a different space. I'm this. I was like, but like at this point, so now I was like, I'm going, I was like, I'm going to take another break. But people that follow me, they, they, they it, this probably makes sense to them now. They like, oh snap, this what, this is what was happening, right? So the end of 2017, I'm like, I'm going to take another break. And what I'm going to do while I take this break, I say, I'm, I'm going to find something to do mm-hmm. to plug into local, uh, like some kind of like work or, or something that I could do uh, so I can have time to continue this process so I can have yeah. time to, you know, keep walking this out and, 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 and make money. And yeah. so I'm sitting at home one day and, and one of my called me he was like they have been trying to do this time, bro bro you you busy and then she like bro i need you to come help me do this thing because jason runs a department at a non-profit yeah. and i went there every session they had for the past 10 years every session they have i go speak i went to speak to the new dudes coming home from jail Faithfully, I'm like, whenever y'all need me, I'm coming. Mm-hmm. Like, just let me know. I'll put it on my calendar. So 10 years straight, I was going over there speaking to dudes, sharing my story, sharing my testimony, sharing the gospel. So now he called me like, bro, I need you to do this thing. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm talking this perfect timing. I'm like, God, you don't. Yeah. So I'm like, let me sit back and, and, and finish and finish allowing and I'm saying allowing loosely. I just don't have no other human word. But yeah, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Let me fin- sit back and finish allowing God to do this work in me, right? Yeah. yeah. So now I'm I'm interacting with these dudes, and and I'm getting more in touch with things that I love, like uh, whether it's it's teaching them some or showing them this, or, like just digging in and being able to walk beside cat. Yeah. Now you got to think at the same time too. I'm gonna be 100. Bro, I had a horrible, I had a horrible disdain uh, for the church in me, like, to be honest, like, horrible, because... Church hurt? Bro, bro, my biggest, and I hate to use that word, but some people say that, man, they just... Cry babies, is that politically correct? I don't know, you know everything wrong. You can say whatever you want, Some people just cry babies. Yeah. And and, and And they need something to cry about. Mm-hmm. You know, but so over the bro, over the course of doing music as a Christian and doing ministry and traveling, bro, this coming from a dude that grew up in the street. Like my best, one of my friends betrayed me and killed my best friend in the world. So I I've been around, like I got took I got took from my mama at fourteen. I tell people this all the time. 
when people wonder why certain stuff don't bother me and hurt me, I tell people all the time, the the, the greatest pain that people that somebody could do to you happened to me when I was 14. Somebody took me yeah. from my mama. Yeah. Like I didn't know when I was gonna see my mama again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for I didn't sure, know man. What condition my mother was in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this this is coming from a person hurt easy. Even when all and all told me, bro, I had no idea what you were going to because you was always smiling all the time. Because that's just me. I'm I'm a happy person by nature. So, but all these years that I was traveling and doing this different stuff, bro, I'm going through the Christian world, bro. Like I was getting hurt so many times by Christians, and it didn't make sense to me because I had a, I had this idea in my head like if you know God for real, because I know God. If you know God for real, you bro, I'd had I'd have had Christian Christian companies, like. In the midst of why, like this one thing was before. So I, I had a Christian company, bro, they owed me like 30 grand. I was traveling and doing so good, I wasn't even pressing them. But I, but I was like, yo, y'all owe me money. And they like, we don't got it. I'm like, how y'all don't got it? Like I pay for all of my stuff. I manufactured all my stuff. We just gonna, so they just start sending me little pieces. I'm thinking they owe me 30, they probably owe me way more than that. You're saying, in the midst of why this was happening, I had put out my book, the one you say you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, like, I had a Christian, distri Christian distribution company come to me. I was always connecting somebody with somebody. Can you connect us with this person? Yeah. Well, what are you doing about this? Well, I don't got nowhere to do it. I got a company. We doing this and we can put it in the store. Boom, boom. Oh yeah. See the company website, know the dude, they holler at them several times. I straight trust him. Bro, I dropped all my books off to this dude, thinking they going to the store. To my book, I done paid this thousand of dollars that, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody, no publishers and none of this done this. You know, it's just personal resources. Yeah. And so I dropped my books off to him, bro. And literally a week later, I get an email from a, a, a different company saying such and such company uh, has the possession now belongs to us. You can send us a letter. We'll try to get it back to you or sell it to you or something the letter say, right? So I'm I'm hitting dude up like, bro, you knew what's, this. What the hell was going on? Yeah. Last you knew this last week. Like, why would you take my stuff like that? And so I had that stuff happening. Where I'd have been to churches, like down south, where a white woman had walked in and literally told me, hey, I, I locked my keys in the car. I know you know how to break into a car. <laughs> and bro, literally everybody, like the pastors right there, elder people. I'm gonna look like the mad black dude, but I'm sitting there, and the pastor like, oh, that's just how she is. Yeah. But stuff like radio, bro. I'm making records. I'm making records in the midst of this, bro. And like, well, this before this when stuff first started happening, right? Like back, back. This wasn't in this point I'm talking about. Like even when I was traveling and doing records and all that, bro, I'd have had incidents where I'd have made, I'd have made records, bro, and I, I take it to Christians. I'm talking about probably one of my most gospel songs ever, uh, a song called "In the Morning" on my "Free mm -hmm. from the Trap" record. I got a choir on there. Everything is Jesus, 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 Jesus. It's talking about joy coming in the morning. Don't don't cut yourself. Don't kill yourself. Don't turn this. Don't do this. Straight God, he produced the whole nine. I'm going to Christian radio, going to uh, uh, people that I know can take it to Christian radio, and they flat out tell me, like, work. And I'm like, why is it not going to be on? I say, yeah. He said, your singer sounds black. He said, it ain't going to work. He said, it ain't going to work. Your singer sounds black. I done talked to Christian program directors, bro. Like, I'd have talked to Christian program directors. Like, I'm talking with my own mouth. This ain't nothing I'm making up secondhand. Yeah, you know, yeah, we on yeah. the phone having a conversation where I go to a city where they got a Christian station that's playing Christian hip hop. 
and I go to this city and, and people constantly hit me up like, why they never play your music? Why they never play your music? Why they never play your music? And I go one day and I cut the station on and literally from the time I leave the airport to the, uh, going, driving around the town, going to the hotel, going back to the uh, airport, I listen to the station the whole, the whole time I'm there. I don't hear yeah. none of my records. But what I do hear are a lot of people that are biting my records. That, like records that sound like mine, beats that sound like mine, yeah. like stuff that sound like mine, but it's a little more mellow. You know, it's like, oh, he, he, I, I call the dude and I'm like, bro. So I go do the show, I get to the show, it's 500 to 1,000 people in there. And I go in and I, before I even start doing my set, I start doing this acapella. Uh, off of uh, uh, Fallen King, King Without a Crown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, around with the top. Before I can get to the top laid back, the whole crowd singing it word for word. So the dude is gone. So he calls me like, hey, man, what song was that that everybody was singing in the room? And I said, that's King Without a Crown. It's off my record from a year and a half ago. I sent it to you. Yeah, but it was too black. Uh, no. No, let me, let, no, I'm saying, let me tell you the, the verbiage. All right, all right. So he say, oh yeah, let me check something. He go, look, yeah, you did send it to me. I said, what happened? We played it before our review board. And they said, your song sound too ghetto. <laughs> same thing. Too black, too Mexican, too ghetto, so too. I, same thing. So I say, and the whole time he's telling me our goal is to mirror the, the hip hop on be here so that we can be under the RB station in your city. I said, why are you not playing my music? I said, let me guess. I said, is it like all 40 year old white women? He said, yep, except for one, he's a black dude. I said, how, how old is he? He said, like 50 something. So I said, bro, you're neck. I said, and so, I, so in this, I'm like, this point, and I'm move on from this. I said, bro, you're never going to get like that to understand what it is that I'm doing or what it is we're trying to do. And so yeah. he said, I said, why wouldn't you play? I, and I pointed out, just being 100, I pointed out, NF is my, my guy, it's my man to this day. Like, good people, solid dude. So I just used NF as a reference. I said, bro, I heard NF a hundred times. I said, if, if they have a problem with my music sounding dark or ghetto, I said, bro, I said, I heard NF songs on there that are dark. Yeah. And he said, well, this is you want me to be honest with you. I said, yeah, yeah, be honest with me. He's exact words friends people church like all of this stuff bro it was then when we start talking about race and ferguson all the time all the stuff that i've been saying the whole time since i've ever existed in this space when it became a hot topic people were like oh y'all just yeah they start y'all me grouping me in a group y'all just saying i'm like i've been saying this stuff since 2009 2005 you but know, it was too it was too black it was too ghetto it wasn't relevant but the minute something pops off where they can connect the two then all yeah. of a sudden like there we go there we go man they want to connect it bro i, I, I didn't treat me like i it, go ahead. it ain't working yeah no i hear you bro i so, just pre i, I just appreciate I, i'm sorry go ahead no no go go ahead no we, we got it we got like a one uh, second so, delay. we got like a one that. second delay oh okay okay go ahead go ahead so after go that ahead. i just was like i was like man I had all of this stuff going on, but then when I got to 2017, I was like, God, finish this work. Yeah. And uh, in, in 2017, I just, I, I pulled back again at the end of 2017. And bro, in 2018, I still I literally said, God, I get it. I said, being blameless before just me being without fault in front of people. I said being blameless before you is me being able to stand in front of you mm -hmm. with no guilt, with no shame, knowing that you are covering me from all of that 
And I literally prayed, bro. I, I, I stood in the bathroom and I prayed and I said, God, I said, show me what's wrong with me. Because mm-hmm. I'm not to the point to finger at everybody else. I said, show yeah. me what's wrong with me. I said, and help me be the best version of me that you created me to be. And so I started going through life. I still didn't want nothing to do with church. I was trying to figure out how I could have Jesus without church. That was my mission. I'm like, how can I have Jesus without church? It ain't going to happen, so, though. It ain't going to happen because you got to deal with people. <laughs> and so it was crazy because, and then I was still wrestled back and forth with like, I, I had these issues with God. The, the thing that I can't talk about, bro, was the worst thing of all. Yeah. And it ain't even the thing me and you talked about offline, yeah, just yeah, to yeah. say that. It's yeah, something yeah, yeah. different. Yeah. And it, it's just like 2018, I went to camp. So in the midst of all of this, bro, my life is is completely like flatline in a lot, a lot of ways. Somebody called me and said they wanted to send like 60 kids to camp in St. Louis. And I'm like, bet, I'll, I'll connect it. Like they called me and, and we, we he set the whole thing up. And so I went to KAA. I'm trying to figure out how I can go to KAA and, and walk around and be like, oh, I'm cool because I told you I don't know how to be fake. So I had been thinking all day to ride up there, like, what am I going to do when I get her? You know what I'm saying? Bro, I got there, pulled up, came in the camp. Uh, They met us at the camp. A dude had a speaker playing my music, dancing. I'm like, oh, this is crazy. So as soon as we pull in the camp, bro, I pull over in this grass. And when I pulled over, I just let the windows down. And, bro, I just felt the presence of God hit me so hard. Mm that I just sat there for a minute. And I was like, man, God, thank you. That's all I kept saying was thank you. That's what you felt you had been missing? This, this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, this, this. I'm like, thank you. And I went and I saw my homeboy, Avery Blue. And Avery, when we got done talking, Avery said, man, Soup Campbell want to meet you. We going to Soup, like, Soup speaking tonight. So I went to see Soup speak. We sitting in there and, and I start talking a little bit and I shut up because I was so emotional. But Soup was, he noticed it. So he like, man, let's pray for Fizzle and the artists and all blah, he prayed. And he like, Bible study at five in the morning. I'm like, man, I ain't going to no five o'clock Bible study. Like in the woods, you know what I'm saying? We in the yeah, woods. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, just five. Have Jason mess around I Papa Bain. I went back to my room, bro, I, to the cab. I told everybody and I said, don't bother me. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to Bible study in the morning. We popped up, went to Bible study. I'm rocked. We leave Bible study. I leave Bible study and I go to soup house because I got to go back home. We go to his cabin and I went to soup cabin. Man, listen, when I tell you this, bro, this man, I'm sitting there talking to him. He's like, I just want to talk to you before you go and blah, 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 and this, that, the other. And we sitting there talking and bro, I start, I just start crying. And so it's a group of dudes on the porch. All the dudes on the porch live in uh, Tennessee with Sue. Mm-hmm. Dudes he discipling them or discipling in some form of fashion. He stopped me like instantly. He said, this will hold on. He turned to everybody on the porch. He said, whatever this is about to say right now, if it leave this porch, who else said it going? He said, oh, we, oh, we understood everybody. They like, yeah. He said, this will go on here, man. Say what you feel like you got to say. Yeah. And I sat there, man, and I poured my heart out. When I tell you this man handled me in a fatherly way that I've never experienced in my life. He looked me in my eyes and he just spoke life into me and I'm bawling. I'm talking about everything I had been holding. For four years, five years, I'm just like bawling, bro. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm talking about I'm just bawling, crying. And he prayed for me. I left and went home. I called my sister. Because the whole time everything been going on, she had been, she called me when it first started. She said, bro, how you doing? You okay? Yeah. And I said, sis, something to tell you something. And what? I I said, and the reason I'm telling you I'm not okay, I said, because the, when the next time I tell you I'm okay, I said, I'm going to be all right. I said, I'm yeah. not going to lie to you and I'm not going to pretend because I need you to know where I'm at. 
right? My sister's solid Christian, like beach mode, right? And so I first person I called was her. I'm driving home. I said, sis. She said, what? I said, sis, I'm okay. She started crying. She said, bro, I heard in your voice. She like, praise God. She crying. I'm crying. We talking. I drive home. I create this plan. I say this. Bah, 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 bah. Dang, I get shot. <laughs> I get shot, bro. And when I ask the people at the hospital, the crazy thing is, bro, when I got shot, and the story led to this point about how did it affect my faith. I had to tell you all of that to tell you this. When yeah. I got shot, bro, I remember sitting outside on the ground. I, I remember sitting there and the first thing I did, no lie, I looked up at the sky. My leg is broke. My foot is on the side like this. Like I can't even feel it. Like I'm like I'm bleeding. First up at the sky. And I said, God, this is let's go. Like it changed, like it changed everything in me. And mm -hmm. when I, I when they when they put me down. Like when they, like even the pain, like I ain't feel no pain shot, I, like nothing. It, it felt like somebody just hit me with a hammer, like real numb. I didn't feel no pain. I was never scared. I never felt like I was gonna die. I knew God had me the whole time. Like I, it was, it was never, it wasn't terrifying. It wasn't none of that. When they had to fix my leg and put it together, the pain, bro, the worst. They had to take my foot and twist it. My bone, I, I'm screaming, yelling, hyperventilating. The doctor told me, he said, what I'm about to do to you is savage. That was his words. They had somebody holding my leg in the middle, had somebody holding me at the top, and had somebody turning my foot. I couldn't even take it the first time, bro. I had to make them stop. I said, give me my headphones. They gave me my headphones. I put my earphones in that I had been years by this band called Citizen that used to be at Morris Hill in yeah. Seattle. It's a song called Oh God. And the song is about God like, I know you'll never leave me. I know you'll never forsake me. I said, give me my, my phone and my earphones. I plugged them in and I cut it on and I prayed. I said, God, you got this. We good. We good. And I'm like, go ahead. I shut my eyes, bracing myself for this pain again. Bro, that doctor tapped me. He said, he you said, okay? We, do we done. I said, yeah, he said, oh, he said, look at your leg. The dude, he said, you didn't feel that? I said, I didn't feel nothing. Wow. And when they put me down, bro, when they put me down, down I don't care how Christian you are. <laughs> I don't care how much you know about God. I don't care what you know, what you've been taught. When them people told me it's a chance that you might not wake up from this anesthesia. Mm -hmm. Everything in life made sense to me at that point. Wow. And the only thing that made sense was stuff that was important. My pastor was right there. I said, man, tell my kid. I told him, I said, if I've ever offended you, brother, in any kind of way, forgive me. Mm. I love you. Tell my kids. Tell my kids. And I went down and the lady, they had a lady with me. She was like, she looked like my grandma. No lie, bro. She just walking me, singing songs, rubbing my head. And I just went out. Mm. But when I woke back up, girl, <laughs> when I woke back up, oh, when I woke back up, baby, I was <laughs> like, let's get it. I said, God, I surely prayed. I said, God. I said, if I go through this the right way, I'm going to be east on the other side of this. You know what you need me to do? He brought yeah. me back. Praise God for that, bro. Yeah, he brought me That's back. That's a crazy story, bro. I, you know, I've, I've been shot. I've been shot seven times. I've been stabbed 18 times. Uh, I wish I could say it was all at the same time. It was, it was at different times and different locations. And, and um, I still remember the pain. I still remember the stuff I went through, the stuff. That, and I wasn't a Christian back then. 
I, I, wasn't, I, I wasn't a believer back then, but all that's a part of my story that God used to draw me back. So I, I will run out of time. I want to make sure I respect your time. I want to make sure that I don't take you away too much from all the other stuff you got to do. Know that I'm really grateful, bro, for you taking time out oh, to man. share to share some of these really intimate stories about your life, about some of the most challenging times. But most importantly, this for being just genuine and sincere, you know, uh, yeah, not too many dudes that. big like us uh, uh, are, are feel comfortable just saying how we was balling like a little like a little kid, you know what I mean? Just balling and balling and balling. Because yeah. a lot of people, especially in my camp, in the yeah. Reformed Presbyterian camp, like, oh, be careful with emotions. No, God gave us emotions, man. And emotions are good yeah. to express our feelings, you know what I mean? So yeah. miss, miss me with that. But I, I'm really grateful man, for let that. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something I learned. I just remember we got a delay. Let me tell you something I learned in that process. Okay. Uh, the boy. Years, years, years. And to me, it's like I don't have nothing to hide. The moment that I understood that I didn't have nothing to hide for people, I've mm -hmm. never been a person that felt like I needed to pretend to be something. But the moment that I understood nothing to, from nobody, because the only person that it really matters to what I'm doing, I can't hide nothing from him anyway. No matter what, yeah. So once I learned that, bro, I was good crowd with that want to do. Like, I'm cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. So you can ask me your question, though. Ask <laughs> me your question you wanted to ask. Which one? <laughs> Which one? The, uh, the uh, CHH question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Close so on so I, I want to yeah, let, let me close on that. Let me close on that. Today, I'm not going to put this dude on blast, but, you know, C CHH ain't, ain't what it used to be. You know what I mean? That's just that's just a reality. It changes, right? Everything changes. Yeah. Um, but in the, in the midst of all that, there have been some consistent brothers and, and artists, and you've been one of them. And, and I'm really honored to call you my friend and my brother, and to know you personally and know and know your story and some of the stuff you've been through. Uh, but somebody today posted something to the effect of, you know, C H H artists who have fallen away from the faith go, you know. And I see a whole bunch of of people throwing names out there. Some of them like, yeah, for sure. Like you can, you know, for a fact, they're not walking with the Lord. I wouldn't say they're no longer in the faith. I don't know if they were ever in the faith or not, but um, what you being a, a, an artist, a hip hop artist who's right. Christian, what, what do you, how would you gauge the current state of affairs in the Christian hip hop community? it's always going to depend too. The thing is, uh, when you got hindsight, everything looks cool, you know. Uh, but all of these years, with what I've been doing, there's always been somebody, Christians, walking down the sideline with me while I'm in the game playing. There's mm -hmm. always been some Christians on the sideline yelling at me and the people cheering for me telling them that I I ain't Christian enough. When you think about, so you got so many issues with CHH as a whole. And I'm going to touch on a couple of, because that's a whole nother show. But you got a you got a couple of issues. First of all, I'm a firm believer in this. I don't, I personally, I think one of the biggest problems with CHH is that the people that are listening think they are in position to tell the people that are creating what they should be creating. So that yeah. I think I think that's one of the biggest issues that exists. Okay, you don't see that. that in any other space of music. You don't see that in any other space of that's like me walking into Burger King and saying, you know what? I know you want to sell whoppers. But this is how but, you need to do it. But this is what you need to say. You don't need to sell whoppers. Yeah. I think another issue is you have artists that are Christian that that uh sometimes because of social pressure sometimes because of uh finances sometimes because of of many different other things you have christian you have artists that are christian that don't understand that they don't have to take the church route mm -hmm. like at all like you could be a christian artist and never call like my man Toby Gray, I always say his name wrong, right? Toby Nigway. I saw a post the other day on. Red oh yeah, 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 yeah. Toby yeah. 
Yeah, that's the 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 try so, Jesus, but don't try me because I got hands, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So to so Toby's a believer. So I like I saw a po but Toby has never class classified himself as a Christian artist, right? He's never done it before. I saw a post online the other day where they had Toby on the post and they said uh, C H H involved C H H songs twenty two or in two K or whatever. How would you classify him as this? And he's not classifying himself as that. Now, when you look at Toby's life. And the things that he do, I can look at his life and see he's a believer. I can listen to his talk and tell he's a believer. He doesn't have to. I'm going to tell you something else real. I'm going to tell you this is a true story. Before Toby ever started popping, like hard like he is now, I saw it. I was like, oh, this dude is finna go. Yeah. Like I saw him like just on the strip. I saw videos he was doing. I said, oh, he finna go. This one, as many people didn't even know who he was. I inboxed him. And I said, I want to share something with you. Unless God is telling you to call yourself a Christian artist, I said, don't, don't do, do it. it. I said, because I said, I'm going to tell you why. And people can be mad all they want to. This, I, this is my stance. I'm going to stand on it. Yeah. I said, I'm going to tell you why. I said, I said, the amount of people that you you're gonna be able to reach by calling yourself a Christian artist is gonna be a hundred times more than it would if you call yourself a Christian artist. Mm -hmm. Don't I said don't do it. I said it ain't worth it. I said it ain't worth the money aspect. So he still gets to hold on to his message. He didn't have to settle and say, man, let me go run and give me a couple quick a couple quick checks. Yeah. He didn't have to do none of that. He sat till it had messages intact. His wife and kids are constantly on display in everything he do. His admiration for the Lord is constantly on display. He doesn't have to call himself a Christian artist. So yeah. I think that's an issue too. You got the, the, the listener tries to control and create it. You have the artists that just feel like they have to go into the church world and once they feel boxed in from the limitation, they want to go the other way. And now you got people arguing with you. So I don't base people falling away based off of them not doing Christian music. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people talk about because of stuff that he's that people have never celebrated about Lecrae that I've seen Lecrae do consistently for years. Lecrae would leave a tour to come home and take his daughter to school the next day and then fly back to his tour. Lecrae would take breaks from tours to spend time with his family. Lecrae has been a consistently solid family man from the day I've known him. Nobody's perfect. I'm sure he's done stuff that ain't that wasn't cool. Growing pains, learning. But the things that he's done that shows his Christian character, nobody never celebrates him for that. But they, they attack just, him they, they, they just cut him up. He chooses to make music a certain way. Yeah, they just cut them up. And it's, it's most cases, it, bro. My biggest, my biggest obstacles of hate, emails, inboxes, Christian. My big from Christians. I go to their pages and it say, "Believer, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit." Yeah. Spirit, scripture number. Lay my life down for the gospel. But you on here telling me you in the, uh, you in my inbox talking crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't do something the way you think I should do it. So yeah. CHH as a whole who has a lot of issues. There, there's no business structure. There's no industry. There's there's no uh, not too many music outlets. Like the man, the artists don't educate themselves. Artists get into the CHH world and people all they gotta worry about is ministry. Like that's true, but it's not. If you're going to worry about ministry, you need somebody to worry about your business because one day your business is going to matter. Like you can't keep your ministry going if you're not doing business the correct news to make music a certain way. That's a, that's not that's not true. That's not a good. That's like yeah. calling good evil. That's all. Yeah. You on borderline. You borderline sinning when you do yeah. stuff like that.
One, one of the things, Thistle, that I would love to see, um, like for one, I'm glad to see that you're back in the church, right? Or that you had, yes, had distanced yourself from the church. You were, you know, upset with the church. And I, I know some of the stuff that has gone on behind the scenes uh, with situations like this. You know, when, when, when I used to host those events where I would bring yeah. people like you at that day, I brought you, Jackie, and Preston, I remember, uh, yeah, for, the, yeah. for the one concert. It was all to raise money for, you know, for yeah. church planning, not, not, not knowing that I would be planting a church the following year, you know? Um, but I had dealt with some with some with some Christian artists who were shysty, bro. And then I, I I went and found out that they had been done dirty, and I could see how yeah. behind the scenes, like all this stuff is like, yeah. why am I even talking about stuff like this to a brother? It's like, you know what I'm saying? And then I hear stories like you talked about earlier. Some of the biggest yeah. hurts have been from Christian companies and and churches and and whatnot. Yeah. But I think that what was lacking, I want to say, you know, five eight years ago was discipleship. I see I see oh, a lot of these young dudes that were that were talking about God and 100%. Jesus and involved, but they weren't being discipled by anybody. You know? Um yeah, I, I, I can count I can count on one hand a, a group of men that were being discipled and ended up being the dude that was discipling them just ended up falling later on. But but nonetheless it's discipleship. Like I don't care what people do. I think it was 100%. I don't know if it was Martin Luther or or, or somebody that said um, that 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 you know everything we do we do it for the glory of God. If you're a shoemaker, it doesn't mean you got to put a, a cross on the shoes to make them Christian. You just make yeah. good quality shoes for the glory of God. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And, and when and, I say, and I want to say this though. When I say I don't care what kind of music a person make, I don't want nobody to believe that I'm saying you can make music that dishonors God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah, for that's sure. not the case. Yeah, it just doesn't have to be specifically all. Christian. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like there, there, there are there are actors and actresses who are Christian. It doesn't mean that they're only going to appear in Christian movies. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, yeah. they're not going to appear. What I would say in movies that where they're going to be all nude and doing all kind of other funny stuff yeah. that they shouldn't be doing to dishonor God, like like you mentioned. You know? But hey, this. So I'm really I'm really grateful for your time, brother. Is there anything closing that you'd like to share with whoever's watching now or will listen and watch this later on? No. Anybody that don't know about me, uh, you can find me on social media, THI apostrophe SL, any social media platform, you, you will see that. Uh, there's uh, Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere for music, THI apostrophe SL, YouTube, any of those places. Amen, amen. So I know you're going to be here in L.A. I'm going to forgive you for not hooking up with me last time you were here when you and Jose from Watts took off yes, and didn't invite me, but I'm not going to forget it again, bro. If you come back here again and forget about your boy, you know what I'm saying? No, I'll see you this time. I'm going to be there for like four days, I think. Uh, I got to talk to Jose. I'm going to be there for a couple of days at least. Okay. I know. I'm going to definitely see you this time. Let, let us know when you're going to be here so we can let all our people know where they can come out and see you, rock with you, hang out with you, uh, and, and nothing else, show their support. Yeah, you for having me on too, okay? All right, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you, bro. We'll be praying for you. I look forward to uh, seeing you in person. Uh, in the meantime, follow the f follow the homie, follow my brother. He's got some new music coming out. I used a clip of it the other day to promote this uh, this podcast. Check him up, hit him up. Uh, dude is fire. Everything he does is fire. I'm grateful to know him, be his you. friend. Uh, until then, this is Hood Grace Podcast with your boy. Peep us out late. Peace. Thanks, Dizzle. Bless you, brother. You're welcome. Thank you.